This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. I almost didn't finish Biomutant. After the 10 hour mark, I was so, so done with this game, I desperately wanted to stop playing it. By that point, I'd explored two thirds of the map, unlocked about half of the available upgrades and abilities, done a whole bunch of side quests and main quests. I'd gone off the beaten trail to see what secrets this gigantic map has in store. In that time, every hour became more difficult than the last as I searched desperately for a reason to keep going. I couldn't find one, and the only thing that spurred me forward was the fact that I had to review this video game. Having now completed the game after around 16 or 17 hours, I really wish I had stopped at the 10 hour mark because nothing I experienced after that did anything to change my mind. Biomutant is very, very not good. I'm aware that this is an ambitious new IP made by a small team of around 25 people. I'm always really aware of that sort of thing when reviewing games from small studios. I definitely reset and realign my expectations based on the size and experience of a studio because expecting Breath of the Wild level quality from a startup studio of 25 people is unfair. Having said that, The Outer Wilds is basically the best game I've ever played and like 20 people made that. Valheim is the best game I've played this year, and five people made that. Small teams can accomplish very, very big things, but that is not the case here with Biomutant. Biomutant is a cautionary tale of biting off more than you can chew. It's Scope Creep, the video game. It's a laundry list of features and systems that would make an open world RPG fan salivate, but very few of those systems work well, and at no point do they coalesce to form a compelling, immersive RPG experience. Had the developer drastically reined in their scope, they might have arrived at something. There's some cool ideas here, the world is pretty, the crafting is cool, the creature designs are interesting, the character creation is great, there's stuff here that sort of works, but it doesn't work nearly well enough to carry the day because even Biomutant's best components feel half-baked and its worst components are uh, yeah, really bad. Anyway, I'm sorry to be the bringer of bad news, but Biomutant is not good and you should not buy it. Biomutant makes one hell of a first impression. I'm not just talking about the flashy trailers we've been seeing. It opens with a beautifully rendered CG sequence that sets the scene and gives the impression of a game bursting with quirky charm. A few button presses later and we're into the character creator, which is honestly really good. We can select the type of rodent we are and they each come with predetermined stats. We can then allocate our stats in a way that will morph our bodies, which is a nice touch. We can select our fur color and add a little bit of flair. We can select our class, which gives gives us access to both bonus stats and abilities. All these decisions, by the way, aren't binding. Like Dark Souls, for example, your early choices are just to get you started. After that, you can use any weapon or item you like and unlock every ability should you choose to do so. So far, so good. We seamlessly transition from character creation into the game world and in a few steps, we're offered our first morality-based decision. There is a dark and light alignment system in this game and like Mass Effect, it's free flowing in that you can make a good decision here and a bad decision there and your alignment will influence certain quests, certain dialogue options and even allow you to unlock certain abilities that are exclusive to the light or dark alignments. Again, all good stuff, so far so good. We go a little further forward and we bump into our first combat encounter. One button or trigger will do a ranged attack and the other does melee. There's dodges and parries, there's some combos. It all looks very flashy and it really feels in that moment that the action you saw in the trailer was accurate. It looked great there and now you're playing it and it looks cool here. But already, even at this point, there's a few question marks popping up. The sound is one. This is what it sounds like when you hit an enemy in Biomutant. There's not much there, but you know, maybe it's just that weapon type. It's a skinny weapon. We'll park that for now. There's also the general floatiness of combat, the lack of hit registration and feedback. It kind of feels like you're hitting a pillow with a feather. But look, it's early days, probably reading into it a little bit too much. Let's keep going. The next section is a linear tutorial mission that gets you to grips with exploration, gear, and puzzles. It's fine, but you know, eventually we get outside and we hit the open world. Biomutant's open world is absolutely one of the big draw cards for this game. The trailer footage depicts a sprawling, vibrant space full of unique characters to meet and secrets to uncover. That's about half true. 
Firstly, the world is gigantic. It's eight square kilometers. I've run around almost all of it because the game loves to send you back and forth across it for no reason at all. Its scale is impressive and surveying its vistas, I'd be lying if I said the infinite horizons didn't give me pause. It's also quite a beautiful world. It's lush, it's green, it's rolling hills and rocky outcroppings dotted with villages and the remains of those that came before you. The central premise of Biomutant's world is that humans polluted the planet so badly that they self-selected out of existence Existence, leaving in their wake mutated creatures such as yourself to inherit the top spot on the food chain. You will find old oil tankers and factories and train yards, power lines connected to nothing and train tracks to nowhere. The scale of all this does a good job of distracting you from just how barren and empty this world is, but eventually the realization catches up with you and it's difficult to think of little else. I don't mean barren in the gritty post-apocalyptic storytelling sense by the way, I mean there is just nothing going on in this world. Nothing. You roam around and you see like one creature sitting in a field. Uh, you ride for like three minutes without bumping into an NPC or a random enemy or anything. You look at this world and you think it's got to be teeming with enemies to fight so you can put all that gear you've collected to good use. There's just nothing out there. It's probably the most empty open world I've traipsed through. This is a theme I'll return to in this review, but this open world feels like pre-alpha, like they've built their topography and their landmarks, but they haven't put the NPCs or enemies into it yet. It really does feel that empty. You are meant to explore this world to uncover its secrets. The way this works is that you'll arrive at a landmark, like the remains of a town or an oil tanker, and there'll usually be no enemies there at all, and then a little thing pops up on the side of your screen telling you what you can loot and collect there, and then you just walk around opening up boxes that have random loot in them and when all the boxes have been collected the game says area cleared and then you leave that's exploration in this game i did that loop probably 10 times at different locations and it never changed. I think it has to be said that there's a big difference between the expansive skybox carried open world that you run through versus the internal spaces that you explore. A disproportionate number of internal spaces were essentially drab concrete bunkers and sewers and bare ass caves with nothing going on. A lot of budget went into making the outdoor spaces look great, it seems very little budget went into making internal spaces look equally good. Puzzles. There are puzzles, though there's only really one type. It involves rotating three nodes so that the colors line up. Once you've done it the first three or four times, it no longer poses a challenge. That doesn't stop the game from asking you to do it 15 or 20 more times, and that's just in the time that I've been playing. Rounding out this talk about the world, we should briefly touch on technical performance. I played this on an RTX 2080 Ti 4K max settings, it ran beautifully. I didn't see one frame drop. I had no crashes and no bugs. There were no quests that didn't complete or whatever. It was technically very sound. I played it mainly with a controller, which worked fine, but I also tested it with a mouse and keyboard, which was equally comfortable. The menu does offer full button remapping for both controller and keyboard and mouse, so that's great. There are a fair number of PC options on hand, including FOV slider, screen shake toggle, dynamic resolution toggle, and a bunch of others. I have a lot of complaints about this game, but the technical performance and the quality of the PC port isn't one of them. Do note though that I spoke to two reviewers who were playing it on a PS5 and they both commented that the number of crashes they were experiencing was absurd. After I spoke to these people, I learned that Biomutant's native 4K option would be disabled at launch, instead utilizing 1080p upscaled to 4K. This change was only for the PS5 version and not for the Xbox Series X version of the game. My unconfirmed suspicion is that it was the 4K resolution that was causing these instability issues because it's a really big deal to promise 4K and then take it away last minute, especially when you do that for only one platform. Having said that, the crash issues may still persist even after this change, so if you're planning to pick this up on PlayStation, find a review that talks about the PlayStation version of the game post day one patch because you don't want to be paying money for a console port that is constantly crashing. To be clear, I strongly recommend against pre-ordering this on any platform or even buying it on day one until you've got clear definitive reviews on console performance uh, with the day one patch because right now there's too many question marks. Okay, so that's the introduction, the world exploration performance. Let's talk about the big stuff now, the main quest lines, the combat, the RPG and the sound design. Biomutant is an open world post-apocalyptic kung fu fable. 
basically in terms of structure it's like uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild I guess but the feedback that's you know that we've been getting over the years it's that it kind of uh, a strange weird good mix between Ratchet and Clank, Devil May Cry, Batman Arkham yeah, and a couple of other influences. That was Biomutants game director Stefan Longqvist, which I'm, I'm sure I got the name wrong, but that was his take on Biomutant and what it is. And you'll notice at the start that he says it's most similar to Breath of the Wild. I think that quote is going to come back to bite him in the ass. This game is not like Breath of the Wild. Certainly for the first 10 hours, this game is actually much closer to a Ubisoft style game where the map is divided up into sections with a whole bunch of forts. You have to assault the fort to unlock it. It will give you access to some new vendors. You do a few forts for each region and then you assault the main fort to take down the tribal leader, rinse and repeat that a bunch of times until you have conquered the map. Now on top of that, there are four world bosses who have to be taken down. They each have a big long boring fetch quest chain before them, which culminates in a really awkward and janky boss fight. The game director has said that you can finish this game in 15 hours if you beeline it, or if you do everything, it would take you 60 hours. I spent about 16 to 17 hours doing all main quest lines and some side content. I really can't see how this stretches out to 60 hours, but I have absolutely no interest in trying to find out. The Ubisoft-esque map marker driven assault the fort style gameplay felt like side content enough. But get this, right? This is crazy. The map you see I have conquered, I've only actually conquered half of this. What happens after you've taken down the first three territories is that you get an offer of surrender from the remaining three tribes. They just offer to give you their territory so you don't have to clear all the forts. When this was offered to me, I thought it was a joke, so I accepted it, and then boom, the map was conquered, and I didn't have to do anything. The game offered me a way of skipping literally hours worth of one of its central mechanics, the conquering territory thing. I've never seen a game do this. It's almost like the developers knew that this was really boring and exhausting, so they wanted to give the player an out. Yeah, thank God they did though, because it was it was not good. I mean, you walk over to a fort, you bang on the door, you fight an enemy, and then you've captured the fort. Uh, when you capture it, you can explore it. You realize that there's only a handful of forts, and they're all basically copy and pasted across the map. Every single detail within these forts is identical from one to the next, down to the placement of lootable chests and NPCs. Even for a game with this sort of structure, it feels a little flagrant. It's not just the forts that are repetitive though, it's the quest steps to open them. On three occasions, I was ready to assault a fort and I go somewhere and then the NPC is like, all right, we're gonna fire you in a catapult, but you need a helmet first, so go get one. And I'm like, all right, never mind that I'm currently wearing a helmet and I have a whole bunch of other helmets in my bag, but okay, there's a map marker a few thousand meters away. So I go over there, I kill some dudes, I loot an item, I go back to my bros and this cutscene rolls, sound on. There is some variance in this fort clearing thing. One time I had to go into a cave and kill some enemies. Another time I had to disable some turrets that were being used as defenses. And it was funny because I thought that when I had disabled the turrets, then I would begin the assault. But no, when I disabled the turret, uh, immediately it skipped to this cutscene where I had conquered the fort. By the way, when you do conquer the fort, the dialogue options are always the same for the faction leaders and NPCs. It's, it's just, it's the same. The world boss battle I did was really janky and not good. That's a lot to do with how bad combat is in this game, but we'll, we'll come back to that. There are side quests in Biomutant, definitely. Like a Ubisoft game, Biomutant is filled with a massive collection of collectathon side quests that send you to all corners of the map to essentially just take up time and pad things out. There's one side quest where there's about 23 captives spread across the map and uh, you have to go to the marker, kill the dudes, you break them out of the cage and then there's a dialogue sequence. And it's always the exact same dialogue, by the way. And you can choose to either help this person or for some reason you can do this. Bam! The dark wins again, right? Right? 
that's, again, the actual sound. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to punch someone after you've just freed them, but okay, you do you, little rodent dude. There are lots of side quests similar to this. Collect the 10 boat pieces, find the 15 billboards, clear the 10 bandit camps, do the 5 puzzles at the place that are just rotating the colors, all of that stuff. There are some more interesting side quests, sort of, but even they fall flat. For example, I found this big conch horn thing and it turns out it summons a big underwater fish guy i look around i find the quest that lets me use these horns i follow the markers i blow the horns do that two more times and on the third time this happens That's the end of the quest. The story for this quest is that we need to kill this big fish thing, but we didn't. He just sort of popped up out of the water and then bailed. Likening this game to Breath of the Wild is a really bad idea for a lot of reasons. Not least of all is the fact that it's just not remotely close to that experience. It, it shares nothing with Breath of the Wild other than that there's a glider and they both have a lot of grass. And look, maybe you don't know me and you're thinking, well, this dude obviously just hates this sort of RPG open world thing. Last year, Ghost of Tsushima was pretty much my game of the year. Horizon Zero Dawn PC was on my game of the year list, as was Immortal Phoenix Rising, which I actually loved. And I solemnly awarded the Game of the Generation Award to the underrated masterpiece, Maneater. So I am down for this formula. I really am. Uh, Biomutant is just, is just not a good version of it. In that earlier quote from the developer, he also likened Biomutant to Devil May Cry and Batman Arkham. I'm going to assume that he's referring to the melee slash range slash aerial knockup style gameplay of Devil May Cry and the you're constantly encircled by your foes encounter design of Batman Arkham. This is a hard section to write because you're looking at this combat and you're probably thinking, that looks pretty cool, that looks fun. This is why the game has done so well with its trailers, because combat really does look nice, it's just not nice to play. To its credit, combat gives you a lot of toys to play with. There's at least five types of melee weapon, which each have their own animations and combos. There's at least four types of range weapon that also have their own unique feel. There's abilities like fire dash and teleport and ground slam and a whole bunch of others. There's a lot here to play with, but like the rest of the game, it all just feels half-baked. None of it works well and you can't help but think, why didn't you just cut half of this out? and focus on making two or three things work well, rather than making 12 things that don't. The overall feel of combat is the worst part. There's just no feedback whatsoever when you hit something. The poor collision detection, the way enemy animations just don't respond, the total lack of satisfying sound effects. Batter them down. All these things are the fundamentals of combat. When these are missing, it doesn't matter how many abilities or aerial knockup combos you have, the fundamentals just aren't there. There's also just some bad design decisions. For example, there's one ability that you can use to make enemies attack each other, and doing so covers them in a green cloud. When that happens, they will still attack you as well, but now you can't see their attacks and their telegraphs because they're obscured by green cloud. That's not the only visual clarity issue. Camera is really bad. There's no lock on toggle in the game, meaning that you can't lock your camera to a specific target. The game will auto lock onto something and you can change that lock on with the right thumbstick. That thumbstick is also used to control your camera. So you essentially have to choose between focusing a target and controlling your camera. It's very bad and I don't know why they did this. I think they were going for that Arkham style combat where the direction you're facing will determine who you attack, but that only works in Arkham because the camera is pulled right back so you can see everything. The camera here doesn't do that, so this whole thing just falls apart. One part of Biomutant that I actually quite liked was the weapon crafting. So there are about, as I said, five types of melee weapons, like one-handers, two-handed swords, big crushing weapons, etc. And there are at least four types of range weapons, pistols, shotguns, auto rifles, and marksman rifles. As you go through the game, you'll collect individual weapon components that you can combine to create unique weapons. Now, most of these components and combinations are just cosmetic and stat based. So your weapon looks funky and it might have stronger stats than a different combination, but it's not like you've magically created a new type of hybrid sword mallet thing. No, it's cosmetic, but it's nice. Some of the pieces though do have a kind of modifier on them, like this piece that will drop exploding pellets at the feet of whatever I'm shooting. 
Of all the components in this game, I think this modular cosmetic plus stats plus modifiers crafting system is the only real keeper. This is the one thing that I'm like, yes, I hope this gets carried forward in other games. But even that is not enough to save combat or even exploration since 90% of exploration is just looting these individual components, most of which downgrade so they get broken down into scrap. There are so many of these components that it becomes laborious to have to constantly loot them and disassemble them. The crafting system is good. The economy that feeds it and the combat that utilizes its outputs are not. Okay, two things to wrap up. Firstly, let's close the sound design discussion that we've been sort of dancing around throughout this review. Uh, Returnal, I recently reviewed it. It had probably the second best sound design of any game I've ever played after Hunt Showdown. I'm loath to say this because I've already hammered this game pretty hard, but Biomutant has possibly the worst sound of any game I've ever reviewed. Combat sounds, we've already spoken about those. Cutscenes though, I've given you a few examples already, but there are just so many sounds missing from cutscenes. The overall audio mix is bad. Like this is what the game sounds like when you're riding through the open world. You can hear the sound of the beating hooves isn't quite right. It's too quiet. And I know that sounds like a really nitpicky example, but the whole game suffers from this issue where the volume of various sounds just hasn't properly been balanced. There's this thing on YouTube or any recorded medium, really. You can have the best picture quality, the best editing, the best written script, whatever. If your sound quality is ass, then it's all over. Audiences need sound that doesn't suck. It's hard to think about anything else. I've mentioned before that this game feels pre-alpha. The sound is the clearest example of that. And since good sound is so integral to an experience like this, it just has a devastating effect on the whole package. Finally, let's come back to that last comparison the developer made, Ratchet and Clank. I think he's probably referring to the character designs, the world, the personality that we think of when we recall Ratchet and Clank. I think of all the disappointments I had with this game, the complete absence of personality was the biggest one. You really get the vibe that this was gonna be a world full of fun characters to meet. Uh, but here's the thing, there's no voice acting in this game other than the narrator. Every character you meet will make some random sounds, and then the narrator will essentially translate what they have said, like this. We've been warned about the state of the tree. Hopefully it's not too late. Not only does this get really annoying really fast, but it also means that no one you meet has a personality with a tone of voice and an accent and funny turns of phrase. They're all just character models that blurt out random sounds and then the narrator will homogenize what they've said into this singular voice that exists across every moment of the game. It completely sucks the life out of this world. This is a real critical hit against this game because if they manage to get this part right, I might have been able to push through the rest of it. Like if you had a cool, quirky cast of characters all mixed up in a crazy story, I might have just grit my teeth and pushed through it. But with a world as empty as this, I needed the few NPC interactions I had to really mean something sort of to be something to look forward to, and they absolutely never were. There was a specific moment for me after the 10 hour mark, and it was the moment that I really, really wanted to stop playing Biomutant. It came after I'd wrapped up the Factional Conquest main quest line, and I began to set out on what I hoped was a new, exciting chapter. The quest sent me to the top of the map, which is far away. I'd never been there before, but that was kind of good, because I was like, hey, cool, new chapter, new area, let's go. So I get there, and I learn that in order to progress, I need an item. That item was back in the old part of the map. So I fast travel there, and when I get there, it says to get that item, I first need to get another item. So I'm kind of pissed off at this point, but I'm like, whatever, let's just keep going. It sends me to an NPC who can give me the item I need, so long as I erect some climbing pegs so that he can climb walls. To do this, I just walk over to the wall behind him, and I press the forward button, and I climb the wall, and it takes like two seconds and it's done, right? That's the first one. The next one is a few thousand meters away, so I have to run all this distance so I can just press forward against a wall to climb up it, and that's the next one done. Then another map marker appears a few thousand meters away, and I was like, you know what? No, I don't want to do this anymore. There are so many other games I could be playing right now. Good games that I'm struggling to make time for. 
Biomutant constantly feels like it is purposefully trying to waste your time. And having finished it now, I can say that it absolutely achieved its objective. If you value your time, I do not recommend you play Biomutant. Do you ever get those notifications on your phone that are like, Hey, someone's trying to reset your password. Well, I do, and it's probably because I haven't been careful enough with my online data. In 2020, it's kind of like we can't really be lazy with our data anymore. Our online presence is a huge part of our lives. You wouldn't leave your house unlocked. You wouldn't leave your car unlocked. That's why you shouldn't leave your internet unlocked either. Surfshark VPN's technology encrypts your data, protecting you from identity thefts and hacks. But if the security angle doesn't hook you, it also lets you access geo-blocked content, something that's particularly useful for me here in Australia, since we're kind of locked out of absolutely everything and our Netflix blows and all. So I basically just use Surfshark to bypass all that geo-block garbage and I can log into US Netflix instead. You can use Surfshark on multiple devices at once, which is something that almost no other VPN allows. It's available on pretty much every platform you can think of. It has 24-7 customer support and it has a full 30-day money-back guarantee. Nice. 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 Best of all, they're offering an 83% discount and three months free when you use offer code SKILLUP at checkout. Click the link in the description below or visit surfshark.deals forward slash skillup. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.